The Symbology of Roses, Part 1 Many artworks of the past are full of symbolic meaning, and that is what, for me, makes them such fun. It can be fascinating to look deeply into the visual clues in a picture and find out what the artist was really trying to say. Take, for instance, Venus Verticordia by the Victorian Pre-Raphaelite artist Dante Gabriel Rossetti. This painting is full of symbolism. Firstly, the roses in the background, a flower closely associated with love and Venus herself. Plus the golden apple in her left hand, which was awarded to the goddess by Paris for her beauty, although she actually won it through bribery and intrigue by promising Paris the love of the beautiful Helen of Troy. The apple also symbolises forbidden fruit, a concept connected to the biblical Garden of Eden story. Adam and Eve were tempted by the serpent to eat the forbidden fruit, leading to the fall of mankind and the origin of sin. The arrow in her right hand is a symbol of her son Cupid and his power to make people fall in love. Around her head is a golden halo, a sign of divinity, and fluttering around the halo, the apple and the arrow are golden butterflies. The butterfly is the symbol of Psyche, Cupid's beloved wife and the goddess of the soul. For in ancient Greek, the word Psyche was used with the meaning of both soul and butterfly. The artist has also placed honeysuckle in front of Venus. The honeysuckle flower has a strong, sweet fragrance. This, added to the deep perfume of the roses, would attract butterflies and insects. And therefore, the two flowers become symbolic of Venus's legendary seductive qualities. Which is why the title of this painting is Venus Verticordia, which means Venus, Turner of Hearts. Roses in particular are the symbols in art I wish to concentrate on today, for they have a particularly rich history. From early times, they have been loved and appreciated for their beauty and seductive perfume. And so, it is not surprising to find them associated with many of the ancient Greek gods, as well as their later Roman counterparts. Sir Lawrence Alma Tadema was known for his depictions of the classical world. One of these was in a rose garden. The woman in the green toga is shaking the rose bushes to cover her friend and herself with rose petals. The roses in this classical setting seem to allude to fun, friendship and, with their ancient symbolism and connection to Aphrodite, possibly even love. The colour of the red rose also calls the ancients to link the flower with Aurora, the goddess of the dawn. This goddess, like Aphrodite, the goddess of love, was notorious for her many romantic affairs. The Gates of Dawn by Herbert James Draper depicts a sensuous and beautiful goddess who has roses entwined in her hair and lying at her feet, subtly alluding to her amorous nature. In fact, roses were an intrinsic part of the mythology surrounding Aphrodite, known to the Romans as Venus. She was said to have been born in a seashell, fully grown, washing up on the shore. And this was designated as the moment of the first blooming of the first ever roses. Sandra Botticelli's famous painting, The Birth of Venus, is an iconic image of that very moment. Pink roses surround Zephyr, the wind god, who has blown Venus to the shore. Red roses, in particular, were closely associated with the goddess of love and beauty. Red was the colour of Ares, Aphrodite's lover, 
and she was said to have snagged her foot on the thorns of a white rose, whilst running to the aid of her beloved Adonis, who had been injured by a wild boar. As the drops of her red blood fell upon the flower, it changed its colour. Thus did she create the first red rose. Roses were also associated in the ancient mind with their form of heaven, the beautiful underworld region of Elysium, the land of rest, peace and harmony for the most noble of souls. It was frequently described as having meadows of red roses and being filled with their exquisite perfume. Carlos Schwaber was a symbolist artist who painted Elysian fields in 1903. Although he has depicted Elysium with the meadows of roses the ancient authors wrote about, he seems to have made them less than heavenly. These roses are not red and are brambly and full of sharp thorns. I do pity the barefooted woman here who looks mournfully around at us. Perhaps there was some symbolist irony at play. Join me next time in part two, in which I look at the evolving symbology of the rose.